Yeah, Weed Show. Wow, wow, wow. What a night in Indy. We'll send it all the way out there with Kellen Brower for the Keed Show here in just a moment. But I, Jason Wygan, am here to talk about one thing and one thing only. And that is the polarization of Ken Roxon. And all the thought and all the attention and all the things that have been said and written and talked about and thought about about this person throughout his long now pro career. It's all brought to you by Racetech and the Gold Valves. You know they'll make your suspension plusher, better bottoming resistance, more traction, made and engineered in the USA. Did you know that a lot of suspension shops use Racetech tools, components? A lot of suspension technicians have taken Racetech suspension seminars. Yeah, Racetech. A lot of people have come through their program. They give information away to other suspension people and tools and parts. They just want people to have better suspension on their motorcycles. Go to Racetech.com. Now, let's talk about uh, Ken Roxon before we send it to Kellen out in Indy. He was patrolling the pits. I got to talk to Kenny in the press conference tonight, but it's really not just about what Kenny had to say tonight. Now, he said great things. He said that this win ranks higher than any he's ever had in his career. And yes, he said, I hadn't won for three years after the big injury. Obviously, that was huge. But he said this one ranks the highest. And he admits that this was tough. He had been riding to the point, he said before Tampa, he was riding until 7 p.m. at night, and he showed up at the race on Saturday in Tampa and felt like his hands were going to be bleeding during the race, and he always believed he could do this. Since the first moment he got back on the Suzuki, he believed he could do this, but to actually do it, even for him, at times, he didn't say he doubted himself, but it felt like it was a long, long, long way off to being able to get this done from how far back they were. He admits the starts were not there. He was not even a podium guy at most of the races this year. Couldn't even see the podium, let alone get a win. He really worked hard for this one. And credit to Kenny. He you know, could have used his press conference to dance on the graves of everyone that doubted him or said he couldn't get it done on this Suzuki. But I think he's put in too many hours, too much blood, sweat, and tears to make this work to say, yeah, I just hopped on that thing and it worked. Even he knew the struggle that he had to go through to get this done. And by the way, shout out to the HEP and in the terms of Roxon progressive X-Star Suzuki team, the team owner Dustin Pipes, former privateer racer in his own right to get this done. It's an amazing night for Roxon. He held off Justin Barsha to the end, and uh, that's certainly not easy when you got Mr. Rev Limiter and Mr. Aggressive Pass right behind you, and Roxon was clutch to do it. So that's the small picture. That's tonight, Roxon winning this race and how exciting that is. But let's talk about Roxon in the big picture. Roxon is one of the most polarizing racers we've seen come through this sport. Yes, absolutely. He is a superstar. He has, I hate to use this term, that it quality. He just has a magnetism to him to be popular. And a lot of that comes because he showed his talent very early. And that's often the way it is. This sport is unique that at 12 and 13 years old, you can really start to identify who the next superstars of the sport are. That's not happening accurately in most other sports. So when you get stamped in this sport as the next guy at that age, that stamp stays with you the whole time. That's part of the reason that Ricky Carmichael and James Stewart are held in such high regard as legends right now because we were told when they were super young that they were going to be the next guys. And I don't mean we were told as in the media pushed a narrative thing. No, I just mean... They were really good, and people that watched them ride when they were young said, hey, guess what? These guys are really good. It was just accurate. It was just accurate. Same thing with Roxon. Everyone knew he had unbelievable talent and speed and skill on a motorcycle at a young age, and he delivered. He won a GP at 15. I remember the very first Supercross he ever came to in Anaheim, he had the fastest lap on the first lap of qualifying that night in his first Supercross ever. You can't teach these things. And partially because of that, and because Ken's a cool guy and he's got personality, he just draws that attention. But as we know in sports, or really any sort of celebrity endeavor, that cuts both ways. Now, first of all, if you're super popular, like Ken is, you're going to get paid a lot of money. That's great. And he's going to have teams throwing great things at him for a long time, which he has. Certainly KTM and Suzuki back then, or RCH Suzuki, or Honda in his six years there, they were doing everything they could to win because they felt like Roxon gave him a shot at getting that done. Uh, but there's a downside to it, too. When you do not deliver, you don't get any extra rope. You don't get cut any slack by anyone. But Roxon's story was even more complicated because of those huge injuries in 2017 and again in 2018. Every time you'd hear someone say, come on, why can Kenny not get it done? And look, 
When Kenny doesn't get it done, he doesn't get it done in heartbreaking ways. He'll lead races. He'll lead championships. It'll look like it's his year or it's his race, and it gets ripped out at the end. And that's not movie quality script stuff, right? The hero always gets it at the last minute when it all looked in doubt. He doesn't lead early and then have someone else pull it away from him. But that's the way Roxanne starts races and starts series so strong. But just when you want to criticize that, you've got to put the arm and the injury thing into perspective and realize, well, is Kenny a guy who has all this talent and didn't get the Supercross title that he's supposed to get? Or is Kenny amazing to have even been in contention for these titles and to win races because of the injuries? That's the polarizing thing with Roxon, which leads us to where we are in 2023, the Suzuki deal. Now, look, everybody thought that was cool. That wasn't polarizing. That was 100% thumbs ups from everyone. Kenny on the retro ride and everyone hoping to get Suzuki back up in the mix. Maybe that will inspire the people over in Japan to update their motorcycles and put more money back into racing. Everyone liked that one. But everyone also knew that there was a chance this wasn't going to work. This was not an obvious slam dunk or a putt. I mean, this was a long drive. It was going to take a lot of things to work right for this to come together and result in race wins. And then, look, he's been good this year at times, but he's not quite been the same level, certainly, that he's been in some of his peak years. And then it makes you wonder, was that the right move? And then the stories start coming out behind the scenes that Kenny is making massive changes to the motorcycle nonstop. And... There are people behind the scenes that have worked at Roxham before, and they have seen this pattern of just making such huge changes with the motorcycle. And again, because Roxham's a high-end guy, they'll give him all those changes. They'll give him anything he wants. But when it keeps going around in circles, you can get spun out. And I have heard people say this season, yeah, Kenny's changing too much. Just ride the darn bike. And it did seem like he was in a tailspin, in fact. But I talked to Kenny press day last week at Daytona, and he said something shocking, which was, we're done with the big changes on the bike. Now we're just making tweaks. So I think there were a lot of people that were believing that Kenny was never going to get to that point, that he was just going to keep chasing his tail, blaming the motorcycle, because he wasn't getting on the podium or winning races this year like he was used to. But he did get to a point where he stopped making the huge changes. It's leading into Daytona. And he said again, coming into this race on press day, that they're not making huge changes. Finally, he's able to be Ken Roxon the racer and not Ken Roxon the motorcycle tester. Now, it's easy to say all those things. It's different to actually execute it, but he did. He led, and look, this field is tough. Yes, he got the whole shot, but, I mean, Cooper Webb had every opportunity. He was close on the second lap of this race and couldn't beat Kenny tonight. And we know how aggressive Barsha is, and Sexton crashed, and Eli Tomac just didn't have it tonight. Uh, these guys all had their opportunity to track Ken down. And look, as I've said, Ken has had races where he's faded before. He did not fade tonight, and this track was a physical test. Barsha said he emptied the tank, everything he had out there in second. So Ken's a polarizing figure. When he doesn't win, we criticize because we know he probably should win. We've already been conditioned to think that, but then we also know about the injuries, and that's where we are now. Was the Suzuki move a good one or a bad one? Well, when he wins like this, it's a great one. I mean, what a spectacular story. If Roxon had stuck with Honda this year and won another race, would that have even been a blip on the radar? But this, and then he gets on the podium and he's holding a Kickstarter in his hands? Doesn't get much better than that. But there were also the races before this where it looked like, oh man, maybe this wasn't the best decision. And by the way, we're hearing Ken talk about riding till 7 p.m. at night. Well, yeah, he's got to try to get this bike up to speed. Maybe he shouldn't have put himself in this position. But it all looks good right now. This is awesome. And in one other picture, the, the, the big picture of Roxanne's career, the small picture of winning tonight, and the medium-sized picture, which is his season, with Tomac having an off night and Sexton another crash, somehow Cooper Webb finds himself in the points lead. The ever-honest Webb said, yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm in the points lead. Obviously, that's good, but I felt like I got my ass kicked tonight. I mean, look, Roxanne and Barsha were better than him, but he was better than his championship competitors. We have one point in the series right now at the top and Sexton's only 13 points back and we have a new winner and Barsha's coming on strong. This is so exciting. Good for Ken Roxon. Good for Suzuki. Listen to those fans there at Indy. They were going nuts. This is awesome for the sport. Uh, Ken Roxon's a polarizing figure, but tonight every single person was on his side. All right, that's the story from the podium. We'll send it to Kellen Brower and find out what happened in the paddock at Lucas Oil Stadium. Yeah, weed show from the depths 
of Lucas Oil Stadium here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Wow, what a 450 main event we just had. I just got done talking to Ken Roxon about winning his first main event on this progressive X-Star Suzuki. Unbelievable. I mean, there's some people that will say, yeah, we saw this coming. We knew it was going to happen. Kenny can win on a Suzuki. We know. No big deal. But it's been a little up and down this year for Kenny. So for him to deliver tonight the way that he did to lead that entire main event and under the pressure of Chase Sexton and under the late pressure from Justin Barsha and, and capture that victory and the emotions that poured out afterwards. I mean, even he said that he just couldn't believe some of the people that were coming up and hugging him and saying congratulations. And he said, you know, it's, it's his competitors and he doesn't look at them as enemies, but in a way it's like, these people kind of are your enemies, right? Like you race every weekend that you have to battle with, that you have to try to defeat. And there's so many of them. I mean, Jason Anderson, Barsha, Cian Cerullo. I think Craig came up. There, there was just so many guys that came up and hugged Kenny after that win. Such a cool experience to see. And, and you can tell after this one, this one meant a lot to him. He felt getting this win for the team, getting this win for himself as well, just meant so much. Um, so it was a really cool thing to, to hear his perspective on this. and you know, how much this means to him and the team, really. So, uh, it's just incredible. But, I mean, aside from that, this main event was something else. I mean, Eli Tomac didn't look great in the main event. Cooper Webb and Justin Barsha going back and forth. Aaron Plessinger at one time was the fastest rider on the track. Uh, Jason Anderson catches and passes Cian Cerullo. Then Cian Cerullo starts catching him again. Then Christian Craig catches and passes Eli Tomac and then almost got AC at the end of this race. Unbelievable. I mean, I don't even know how to catch my breath. and. The craziest thing is that the 250 main, if you go back to that a little bit, in hindsight, it seems very boring. It was kind of not the most exciting race ever, I guess, because once Hunter Lawrence got in the lead, he got just enough of a gap to kind of hold it, establish himself as the guy that was running away at the front, really, and then wins the main event and wins his fourth race from five rounds this year. Has a big points lead, talked to him after the race as well. And he said it is not management mode whatsoever. 22 point lead in this championship, five rounds to go. He doesn't look at it as a management situation. He wants to go out and win every week. And he said, I want to win them all. I want to win them all. So for Hunter Lawrence's sake, even though he is looking so good and so in control, still just wants to go out and win every, every week and prove that he can do it really. And, and that's pretty, I think pretty cool that it doesn't matter if he's leading this championship by a lot and he has a chance to do something really special with he and his brother Jet. He still wants to win every single week. Um, man, what else is there to talk about? Well, talk to Aaron Plessinger as well after the race. He kind of highlighted that uh, it was really like the start for him. He felt like he had the pace to run with the leaders, but the start hindered him. And then by the time he got to fourth place, he's, he didn't really have the, I guess the outright speed to catch up to the front three and so he settled into a pace and got fourth again and he was like every time I get fourth nothing happens up front with the leaders like they all stay up there but to be fair Chase Exxon went down which again like golly Chase crashing all the time when are you just not going to crash Chase it sucks to see him go down again as he's battling Roxon for the lead in that main event it gave Kenny a, a pretty good gap at that time and then Justin Barsha came up at the end and, and nearly got him but man oh man Chase Sexton still 13 points down in the championship what feels like so many missed opportunities for Chase and so many blown wins and so many this and that and the other thing and he's still close like he's still only 13 back it's just gonna take like two wins in a row and suddenly we're gonna be like man Chase Sexton could lead the points next week but he's got to win one at least to just get these jitters out of the way get whatever it is I uh, talked to Lars Lindstrom at Honda afterwards and he said the Chase was just a little banged up nothing really uh, crazy in that regard but uh, his foot was a little bit banged up his ankle so he was limping back to the bike and I mean, I'm sure you guys saw that. We're gonna walk by the uh, progressive tent right here uh, because they are still having a good time. Everyone's still hanging out in the tent. Everybody else is is down. You know, like here's all the star team right here. They're they're deep hacking or whatever you want to call it. And I mean, look at Suzuki here. They are celebrating this one. They have all these people inside here having a good time, and they should because this is a big first win for Progressive X Star Suzuki. Um, the little team that could kind of right picks up Kenny Roxon and wow wins round nine here in Lucas Oil Stadium like. I still kind of can't believe it. Watching that main event unfold, it was a little bit surreal because you start realizing who are the guys that are battling for the win and how much it kind of means to each of them. Barsha, who's had this rough year, hasn't really gelled with the, the new gas gas at the start at least and you know got a podium early, but it maybe didn't suggest that he was fully there and now almost won this main event. 
and even after that still felt incredibly good that Kenny Roxon won this main event anyway and, and was hugging him and oh man so many hugs and I think everyone just kind of left here happy the crowd was going nuts Kenny after the race uh, dropped his bike and just celebrated with the fans and the fans were giving a ride back to him unbelievable um, a little bit more on the 250 class though so like I said I talked to Hunter Lawrence also talked to Nate Thrasher and Jordan Smith and they both kind of highlighted that it, you know it was more or less down to the start tonight that track was so tricky that you know if you could minimize the mistakes you might have a chance to get Hunter but Hunter just rode so good and both of them gave Hunter credit for how well he rode so uh, they just knew it wasn't going to be in the cards for them to catch him tonight and they had to settle for second and third but for Thrasher I mean to be fair that's a pretty good turnaround for Thrasher because uh, last week at Daytona was not anything he wanted of course getting put down by Hunter Lawrence and then uh, crashing all by himself jumping into the tough locks like some things that he wishes he could do a little bit differently I guess but what are you gonna do it's it's racing dirt bikes sometimes it happens so uh, for him I think he felt pretty happy with the second he said that actually the ACL didn't hurt that much tonight to ride with even though it's a rutted track and you're obviously moving the legs around quite a bit and he said it was all good no problems there and even during the week he said he cracked two ribs actually in the crash that he had so uh, he didn't ride at all this week and still felt good enough and fitness wise strong enough to last 15 minutes on this track and pick up a second so I think that's a good sign for him moving forward that he still has the pace to win and still has the speed to win and uh, probably could win Detroit next week so but uh, yeah 122 point lead Max Ansley gets fifth tonight would have gotten six but Hayden Deegan went down late in the whoops um, Jeremy Martin talked to him after the race and he said that he felt pretty good here tonight uh, definitely better than he did at Daytona just felt more comfortable with the track and the bike setting and all that stuff like that but uh, you could tell that from a lot of these guys perspectives after the race that they were not only physically but kind of mentally drained there's a lot that goes into racing that that kind of a track and that rough of conditions a lot of guys also said how much the line saying look at there's a celebration they're having a good time they're popping bottles love to see it I mean hey this is a big deal for them you know this is they started what five six years ago the HEP Suzuki team and now to win a main event awesome love it great to see it um, wow still can't even kind of catch my breath from the 450 main event and there's still 250 to talk about and, and everything like that in between but uh, Kenny Roxon getting it done hey Cooper Webb another thing we should talk about here Red Bull KTM down this way Cooper Webb is now leading the championship points just quietly under the radar because Eli Tomac got eighth tonight in a, a very strange display and Tomac's long gone and Webb and all of them were in the press conference I didn't get to hear what Webb said didn't talk to him but um, yeah red plate goes to Cooper Webb now so championship picture wise this also flipped over a little bit because you had Webb trying to gain those points back that he lost to Tomac and not getting that win last week and then he was able to come out with the red plate anyway even though he didn't win this week which is kind of a weird thing because they've been going back and forth with wins and you know Kenny winning is is a bit of an oddball thing in the mix of this championship hunt but um yeah Webb he lost the position to Barsha, stayed with Barsha, it looked like he might have a, a late run at the end, then made a mistake before the whoops, went around the whoops, lost a bunch of time. Uh, I think he maybe almost crashed at one point as well. So, you know, Webb wasn't all there tonight, but still walks away with the championship lead. Man, so we got one up now on Tomac for Webb in this 450 standings. 13 back is Chase Sexton, and suddenly, a fourth different winner this season, Kenny Roxon gets it done tonight at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. Incredible is the only word I can use to describe tonight.